Is it possible to adjust the valve lash while the engine is still inside the bike? Why yes! Two years ago I made a video about adjusting valve lash by demonstrating with an engine that was not connected to a scooter. This might have seemed fine and dandy at the time, but who's actually going to take the time to disconnect their entire motor just to adjust a few valves? Today I'm going to show you how to do an engine in valve adjustment on your scooter by doing a valve adjustment on my scooter. Let's go. What are you going to need? Well, a socket wrench first of all. I have a handy dandy extender here that makes it easier to finagle it onto hard to reach bolts. You want to make sure you have the right sockets. For most Chinese scooters, you'll need 10mm to get the seat off, 8mm to get the valve cover off, and 9mm to adjust the valve rockers themselves. Then of course you're going to need some of these. These are feeler gauges, and I have one specially for scooters, but I also have a huge stack of various ones here. Finally, the impact gun. You can only use this to help you loosen the bolts to take the seat off. Do not use this on any sensitive engine compartments, please, for the love of God. In most models, you put your key in the ignition and turn it backwards to pop the seat off. Oops, there's a, a, the, the phone mount. Well, well, let's do this. Okay, much better. Here are the location of my four seat bolts. Seat bolts? Seat belts? What? Uh, seat nuts. This is where you could use an impact gun, but since I already banished it to the other corner of the garage, I'm just gonna use a good old-fashioned socket wrench here. Yep, you can watch me struggle with these four seat nuts that I usually wore off in seconds with the impact gun. Alright, now we lift out the seat, and some of these scooters have an anti-theft device that is wired to the harness through the seat. If that's the case, just make sure you unplug it. Now we're under the hood. Seat. We're under the seat. So your valve cover is this thing right here at the tippy top of your engine. But in order to get better access to the valve cover itself, you'll need to remove some more plastics. On these 49cc models, all you actually need to do is get the front plastic off, boom, full and easy access to the valve cover. This will also expose your battery, so make sure you watch all wrenches and metal items around that area. You don't want to start a fire. Here's a better view. This right here is your spark plug and coil, this part is your valve cover, and this down here is some emissions junk. It boots. In order to help with the next step of setting the engine to top dead center, I'm going to remove the spark plug. To do that, we just pop off the spark plug boot, and then we can go around here, and we get the right socket, and start screwing, and screwing. Jesus, the spark plug is finicky. There we go, and woo wee look at how white that is. If you see this, you definitely need to upjet your carburetor and run a little bit richer, because this means that the engine has ran too hot. Hey, I have a video on that. Check my channel. Anyways, now we just need to get the valve cover off. Pretty easy stuff, usually. I mean, you get your 8mm socket and you just gently start loosening. Ideally, you want to loosen diagonally to relieve the pressure everywhere in the engine head at once, but on these little scooters, that's not really a concern. Just loosen gently. Boom! Engine internals. Ugh, so naked! With the valve cover off, this is what you should see. Okay, quick refresher on the engine head. The top black thing is the rocker for the intake valve, the bottom black thing is the one for the exhaust valve, and the circular saw thing on the right is the timing chain. Now you want to come to this side of your bike and come to your kickstarter and start pushing it down with your hand. What you're doing here is turning your engine over, moving the crankshaft, and spinning the piston. You see this timing chain? Well, your objective is to get the big hole in the disc under the chain to line up the best it can with the center of the engine. On either side of that big hole are two little holes, and the little holes should line up with the edge of the engine cover. You have to keep moving your engine over until you can get it to sit nice and straight at top dead center. Look at that, it wants to rest right here. This means that this is top dead center, even if the big hole is just slightly off from sitting perfectly straight. You want to get your feeler gauges to go between the actual rocker arm and the valve spring. There should be a tiny gap that you can use to slide the feeler gauge right in there and check how wide that gap is. How wide is the gap supposed to be? Well, for most Chinese engines, it's at 0.005mm on the intake valve and 0.004mm on the exhaust valve. 
However, what I have seen in certain 49cc Chinese scooters is that the actual rocker arm platform expands when the engine gets really hot. This makes the valve lash too big, and then you'll hear noisy ticking and whirring. It sounds pretty bad. It's not actually that bad, but if this happens to you, you should set your valve clearances to be a little bit tighter. Today, I'm doing 0 0.0025 millimeters on the intake and 0 0.003 millimeters on the exhaust. It's a little bit tighter, but because they expand when hot, it should be perfect, right? In order to actually loosen or tighten the lash, you need to use that 9mm socket to loosen the nut that holds the adjuster. Once it's loosened, there's a tiny little square nub, I'm talking really small, that sits in the center of the nut. You turn that little nub clockwise to tighten the lash, and you turn it counterclockwise to loosen the lash. Adjusting the valve clearance is a skill that only gets better with practice. It's quite finicky because it's easy to accidentally tighten the nub when you're trying to torque that adjuster nut back down and then you have to start all over again. Here you can watch me struggle for minutes to get the perfect lash on both valves. There is no perfect video that will show you the exactly correct way to tighten it. So the only way you can do it is by trying it yourself and learning on the go. The good news is that you can't mess anything up of course, just keep checking with your feeler gauge and eventually I'm sure you'll get it. Okay, congratulations! You have finally gotten the perfect valve lash, and you can check this by gently pushing and pulling on the adjuster arms. You should feel the tiniest bit of vertical play, and perhaps even hear a click. This means that there is indeed some sort of gap there, and you haven't adjusted it to be too tight. Look at those valves open and close! Oh yeah! Now it's time to start reassembling everything. The first thing to go back on is your valve cover itself. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, hold on. It's always good practice to give that rubber gasket a nice check before you reconnect it. Make sure there's no dirt or any other random debris on there that could stop it from forming a good seal. Okay, now we've got the valve cover back on. It's just a question of gently getting those screws in there and starting them by hand. See those two screw holes for the shiny emissions junk? Those two screws are always a bit shorter than the rest of the head screws, so make sure you match the right screw to the right hole. Which is always good life advice, I guess. Huh? So the most dangerous thing about doing a valve adjustment is the possibility of stripping the valve cover screws. Why is this? Because the valve cover itself is made from fragile aluminium to help with heat dispersal. So the number one thing to keep in mind when tightening screws is just keep it snug. No forcing. Do not force on these screws or they'll strip faster than you can say oil leak. Oh yeah, and then you're left with a nasty oil leak from the valve cover that you can never fix. It'll just leak. It's terrible. It happened to me. Please, just don't do this. Just be gentle with these screws. Snug is all you need to form a good seal with that rubber gasket. Now we're going to reinstall the spark plug. I have a temperature sensor that goes in here, it's a great investment by the way, and you just guide your tip into the hole and you start feeling there for the entrance. Once you feel the tip of the engine head grab the spark plug, you just ease the rest of it in gently by hand. Giggity. No, all jokes aside, make sure you have your spark plug started by hand so it doesn't strip out or anything. That would also be a really bad time. Once you can't turn it by hand anymore, use your socket wrench to torque the spark plug down. You want to go snug plus a quarter turn, that's what the experts say, but in my case I'm playing it by feel because that temperature sensor messes with the feedback I get. Okay, now for the spark plug boot. Just grab it and thread it back onto the edge of the spark plug. Bada bing, bada boom. Now you just reattach your plastic bits. Cover up the front of the engine and that battery. Oops, I forgot my screwdriver. Again. Now we get that seat back over here. Make sure to reconnect the anti-theft device. Otherwise your scooter won't start. And you'll go crying to a hundred different forums and have a meltdown. Don't ask me how I know. Then, it's just a question of tightening your seat down to the frame with those four seat nuts we talked about earlier. Now you can close your seat with the satisfaction of a job well done. Because now your valves are adjusted. And now for that sweet, sweet payoff. Turn that key, 
flip that kill switch and listen to the sound of a happy engine with the right valve lash.